Good news. South Korea sent 12 most powerful frigates to the Philippines this month. By 2028, the Philippine Navy is expected to field at least 12 vessels, including OPVs, corvettes, and frigates, from South Korea. In 2016, the Philippines ordered two brand new frigates from Hyundai Heavy Industries, HHI. The procurement of the Jose Rizal class frigates marked a new era for the Philippine Navy, which previously relied on ships from the Second World War and Cold War. Since this initial order, Seoul's successes in providing the bulk of Manila's newfound maritime capabilities have only expanded. Amid increasing regional tensions, particularly in the West Philippine Sea and the Luzon Strait, Manila is modernizing its military capabilities through the revised Armed Forces of the Philippines Modernization Program, RAFM. Many of the new assets being procured are related to the Armed Forces of the Philippines, AFP, Shift to Territorial Defense Operations, TDO, which aims to orient Philippine forces toward more conventional and higher-end threats. Some examples of procurements made by Manila to address this new focus include Israeli long-range patrol aircraft and Indian BrahMos supersonic anti-ship cruise missiles. For warships, one of the most important acquisitions made during the modernization program, South Korea has established itself as the Philippines' premier supplier of ships. Before, Before the recent influx of Korean vessels and upgrades to the fleet, South Korea was already involved in supplying the Philippine Navy. During the Cold War, the Republic of Korea Navy handed over two Second World War era destroyers. These were reportedly cannibalized to help maintain other ships in the fleet. Twenty years later in the 90s, South Korea transferred eight Kamsuri and 12 Haksin class patrol boats, which were known as the Tomas Badailo and Conrado Yap classes respectively. However, these transfers paled in comparison to recent efforts by Seoul. Since 2019, the Philippine Navy has received three South Korean warships. These include the two Jose Rizal class frigates, BRP Jose Rizal, FF-150, and BRP Antonio Luna, BRP-151, ordered in Horizon 1, the first phase of the RAFMP. South Korea also donated the Pohan class Corvette ROKS Chungju, PCC-762, now known as BRP Conrado Yap, PS-39. All of these vessels belong to the Philippine Navy's Offshore Combat Force, OCF, the command responsible for territorial defense and maritime patrol missions. The OCF's six other vessels include three Gregorio del Pilar-class offshore patrol vessels, OPV, and three Peacock-class corvettes. These Cold War era vessels were transferred or sold to the Philippines from the United States and United Kingdom, respectively. The two classes have received various improvements over the years, with the latest upgrade awarded in 2019 to South Korea's Hanwha systems for the upgrade of the three Gregorio del Pilar class OPVs. By 2028 the OCF is expected to have eight to nine more ships, a 100% increase in assets added to its command, all of which are coming from South Korea. HHI-1 contracts to construct the next batch of modern warships for the Philippine Navy in 2021 and 2022. In total, HHI is to deliver two corvettes by 2026 and six OPVs by 2028. An additional Pohan-class corvette is also slated to be transferred to the Philippines as confirmed by Philippine officials, although this is in question as the transfer was supposed to take place in 2022. Colin Ko, a senior fellow at the S. Rajaratnam School of International Studies, explained to Naval News why South Korea has such an advantage in supplying the Philippines with vessels and naval systems. I believe it's to do with some intersecting factors here. 
The first is cost effectiveness. Korean naval systems were considered bang for the buck. This concerns not just build costs, but also the after-sales service support, given the geographical proximity compared to vendors in the distant west. The second factor is commonality in systems and equipment that also eases logistics requirements compared to operating and maintaining platforms and systems procured from a diverse array of sources. Quality-wise, several SE Asian navies have operated Korean-built assets for some time and the equipment had been deemed to be generally reliable. The advanced capabilities inducted by the ROK Navy in recent decades have also helped in such exports. As Manila enters Horizon 3, the third and last phase of RAFM, it is stated that many of the planned procurements made from 2023 to 2028 will be focused on TDO. Further orders of warships are expected during this time period, which will most likely be awarded to HHI considering the composition, experience, and past dealings done with the South Korean company. However, one bid that might see Seoul falter is the Philippine Navy's submarine acquisition program. South Korea's Hanwha Ocean is going up against various foreign competitors for the bid. Yet compared to them, particularly France's naval group and Spain's Navantia, the Korean offer is fairly unknown. While core details, such as the offer of two DSME 1400PN submarines, a submarine base, and a soft loan with 100% financing, these pale in comparison to what foreign competitors have released to the public. Naval Group told Naval News details on their offer to the Philippines in June, while Navantia unveiled their plan to Inquirer in August. Regardless of the submarine bid's outcome, South Korea's role in the modernization and expansion of the Philippine Navy is clear. If not realized today, then it will be clearly seen by 2028 when two-thirds of the service's Blue Water Command originated from South Korean yards.